After cell coma let us now go further because after the cell multiplies it may form tissues, bones and muscles. Now let us first review the important parts of the bones in our body. From the frontal bone. Flat skull bone forming the forehead and top of the eye sockets, and articulating especially with the parietal. Zygomatic bone. Bone forming the cheek pouch and the outer edge of the eye socket. Clavicle. Long inward curving bone located between the acromion and the sternum. Scapula. Large thin flat bone articulating with the clavicle and the humerus to form the shoulder. Numerous shoulder and back muscles are attached to it. Humerus. Long arm bone articulating with the scapula to form the shoulder, and with the radius and the ulna to form the elbow. Ulna. Long bone forming the inner portion of the forearm located between the humerus and the carpus, hand bone. Femur. Long thigh bone articulating with the iliac bone, tibia and patella, it is the longest bone in the human body. Tibia. Long bone forming the inner portion of the leg located between the femur and the tarsus, foot bone. Fibula. Long bone forming the outer portion of the leg located between the femur and the tarsus, foot bone. Temporal bone. Flat skull bone that protects mainly the organs responsible for hearing and equilibrium. Maxilla. Toothed bone forming the upper jaw, it helps to form the palate, eye sockets and nasal facet. Mandible. Movable tooth bone forming the lower jaw, it is the only movable bone in the head and its articulation with the temporal bone allows the jaw to move. Ribs. Slender curved bones articulating with the dorsal vertebrae and the sternum, the twelve pairs of ribs make up the lateral walls of the thorax. Sternum. Long flat bone to which the ribs, in particular, are attached. Two floating ribs. Thin curved bone articulating with the dorsal vertebrae at one end and remaining free at the other end. Vertebral column. Movable bony axis made up of various parts articulating with each other. Vertebrae. It supports the skeleton and contains the spinal cord. Ilum. Large flat bone made up of three fused bones that attach the lower limb to the trunk. The ilum, sacrum and coccyx form the pelvis. Sacrum. Bone made up of five fused vertebrae located between the lumbar and coccyx vertebrae. Coccyx. Bone made up of four to six fused vertebrae in the lower terminal part of the vertebral column, and articulating with the sacrum. Patella. Flat triangular slightly bulging and mobile bone articulating mainly with the femur, this knee bone allows the lower limb to flex and extend. Radius. Long bone making up the outer section of the forearm. It is connected especially to the carpal bones to form the wrist now for the posterior part. Parietal bone. Flat cranial bone articulating with the frontal, occipital, temporal and sphenoid bones. The two parietal bones form the largest portion of the dome of the skull. Axis. Second cervical vertebra supporting the atlas. It allows the head to rotate. Seven cervical vertebra. Bony part of the neck forming the upper terminal part of the spinal column. Head of humerus. Upper terminal part of the humerus articulating very freely with the scapula. Twelve thoracic vertebra. Bony part supporting the ribs located between the cervical and lumbar vertebrae. Three false rib. Slender curved bone articulated with the dorsal vertebrae at one end and attached to the upper rib at the other end. 5 Lumbar Vertebra Bony part larger than the other vertebrae located between the dorsal vertebrae and the sacrum, it supports a major portion of the body's weight. Sacrum Bone made up of 5 fused vertebrae located between the lumbar and coccyx vertebrae. Lateral Condyle of Femur Round protuberance of the lower terminal part of the femur enabling articulation with the tibia. Medial Condyle of Femur Round protuberance of the lower terminal part of the femur enabling articulation with the tibia, this condyle is longer and narrower than the lateral condyle. Occipital bone. Flat skull bone articulating with the parietal bone and atlas, first cervical vertebra. Among others, it makes up the largest portion of the base of the skull. Atlas. First cervical vertebra supporting the head and supported by the axis. 
acromion. Extension of the spine of the scapula forming the point of the shoulder and articulating with the clavicle. Spine of scapula. Pointy protuberance of the posterior scapula that extends through the acromion. Scapula. Large thin flat bone articulating with the clavicle and the humerus to form the shoulder. Numerous shoulder and back muscles are attached to epicondyle. Outer protuberance of the lower terminal part of the humerus. Various extensor muscles of the hand and fingers are attached to it. Olecranon. Upper terminal part of the ulna articulating with the humerus. It forms the protuberance of the elbow. Epitrochlea. Inner protuberance of the lower terminal part of the humerus. Various flexor muscles of the hand and fingers are attached to it. Greater trochanter. Large protuberance of the upper terminal part of the femur. Various thigh and buttock muscles are attached to it. Neck of femur. Narrow portion of the femur connecting the head of the femur to the trochanters. Head of femur. Upper terminal part of the femur articulating with the iliac bone to form the hip joint. Ischium. Constituent portion of the iliac bone supporting the body's weight when seated. Talus. Short bone of the tarsus that, with the calcaneus, ensures rotation of the ankle and, with the tibia and fibula, flexion and extension of the foot. Calcaneus. Large bone of the tarsus forming the protuberance of the heel, in the upright position, it is the posterior contact point of the plantar arch. After the bones let us discuss the muscle. From the trunk slash torso. There is sternocleidomastoid, trapezius serratus, anterior latissimus dorsi, pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, deep muscle, rectus abdominis, external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis. In the arm or hand. Deltoid, biceps, triceps brachialis coracobrachialis, deep muscle, Brachii radialis pronator teres flexor carpi radialis extensor carpi radialis lungus flexor carpi ulnaris flexor carpi digitorum flexor digitorum superficialis. In the leg slash foot from upper leg, there is iliacus sos, sos major and sos minor, rectus femoris vascus lateralis vascus medialis vascus intermedialis, deep muscle, adductor lungus adductor magnus adductor brevis gracilis sartorius. Lower leg slash foot, gastrocnemius soleus perineus lungus tibialis anterior extensor digitorum lungus extensor hallucis lungus flexor digitorum lungus, deep muscle. In head slash neck slash face frontalis temporalis sternocleidomastoid. As for posterior muscle it is impossible to see all the skeletal muscles of the human body from one position because, they are located in different areas of the body anterior, posterior, medial, lateral etc., and there are layers of muscles, such as, deep, muscles are closest to bones whereas, superficial, muscles just beneath the skin. From the trunk slash torso, splenius capitis, deep muscle, levator scapulae, deep muscle, trapezius erector spinae, deep muscle, supraspinatus, deep muscle, infraspinatus, deep muscle teres major, deep muscle, Teres minor, deep muscle, rhomboid major, deep muscle, rhomboid minor, deep muscle, latissimus dors gluteus me, deus gluteus maximus gluteus minimus external oblique internal oblique. In arm slash hand. Deltoid triceps brachii brachii radialis extensor carpi ulnaris extensor carpi digitura in leg slash foot. Upper leg. Rectus femoris vascus lateralis biceps femoris semimembranus semitendinus adductor lungus brasilis pyriformis, deep muscle, gluteus maximus gluteus medius gluteus minimus. Lower leg slash foot. Gastrocnemius soleus perineus lungus achilles tendon in head slash neck slash face. Splenius capitis and trapezius. Another specialization of the skeletal muscle is the site where a motor neuron's terminal meets the muscle fiber called the neuromuscular junction, NMJ. This is where the muscle fiber first responds to signaling by the motor neuron. Every skeletal muscle fiber in every skeletal muscle is innervated by a motor neuron at the NMJ. Excitation signals from the neuron are the only way to functionally activate the fever to contract excitation contracti soft hyphen on coupling.
All living cells have membrane potentials, or electrical gradients across their membranes. The inside of the membrane is usually around minus 60 to minus 90 mv, relative to the outside. This is referred to as a cell's membrane potential. Neurons and muscle cells can use their membrane potentials to generate electrical signals. They do this by controlling the movement of charged particles, called ions, across their membranes to create electrical currents. This is achieved by opening and closing specialized proteins in the membrane called ion channels. Although the currents generated by ions moving through these channel proteins are very small, they form the basis of both neural signaling and muscle contraction. For a skeletal muscle fever to contract, its membrane must first be excited in other words, it must be stimulated to fire an action potential. The muscle fever action potential, which sweeps along the sarcolemma as a wave, is coupled to the actual contraction through the release of calcium ions, Ka++, from the SR. Once released, the Ka++ interacts with the shielding proteins, forcing them to move aside so that the actin binding sites are available for attachment by myosin heads. The myosin then pulls the actin filaments toward the center, shortening the muscle fever. In skeletal muscle, this sequence begins with signals from the somatic motor division of the nervous system. In other words, the excitation step in skeletal muscles is always triggered by signaling from the nervous system motor neurons that tell the skeletal muscle fibers to contract originate in the spinal cord, with a smaller number located in the brainstem for activation of skeletal muscles of the face, head, and neck. These neurons have long processes, called axons, which are specialized to transmit action potentials long distances in this case, all the way from the spinal cord to the muscle itself, which may be up to three feet away. The axons of multiple neurons bundle together to form nerves, like wires bundled together in a cable. Signaling begins when a neuronal action potential travels along the axon of a motor neuron, and then along the individual branches to terminate at the NMJ. At the NMJ, the axon terminal releases a chemical messenger, or neurotransmitter, soft hyphen acetylcholine AC. The AC molecules diffuse across a minute space called the synaptic cleft and bind to AC receptors located within the motor end plate of the sarcolemma on the other side of the synapse. Once AC binds, a channel in the AC receptor opens and positively charged ions can pass through into the muscle fever, causing it to depolarize meaning that the membrane potential of the muscle fever becomes less negative, closer to zero. As the membrane depolarizes, another set of ion channels called voltage-gated soft hyphen sodium channels are triggered to open. Sodium ions enter the muscle fever, and an action potential rapidly spreads, or fires, along the entire membrane to initiate excitation contracti soft hyphen uncoupling. Things happen very quickly in the world of excitable membranes, just think about how quickly you can snap your fingers as soon as you decide to do it. For the striation of each muscle it is formed by alternating thin and thick filaments. Featuring a band equals remember it is dark band with an A in the second letter comma located in the middle part of sarcomere, which is composed of thick filaments. H is the dark part in the middle of the A band, M line the faint part in the middle of the A band. I bend the light band with I on second letter located in the lateral part of sarcomere, which is composed of thin filaments. There are three types of skeletal muscle fibers, type 1, type 2, B, type 3. The three types of skeletal muscle fibers are hyphen slow contracting muscle fiber, type I, which has the main characteristics. Low myosin actase activity, compared with type 2 fibers, high capacity for ATP production via oxidative phosphorylation, very dense capillary network high levels of intracellular myoglobin. Therefore, the main pathway for ATP production is aerobic cellular respiration, the final stage of which is oxidative phosphorylation and their predominant color is red, as in, red muscle. Fast contracting muscle fiber, type IA, has the main characteristics of higher myosin actase activity than type I fiber shy capacity for ATP production via oxidative phosphorylation, dense capillary network high levels of intracellular myoglobin. Therefore,
The main pathway for ATP production is aerobic cellular respiration, the final stage of which is oxidative phosphorylation. And their predominant color is red, as in, red muscle. The fast contracting muscle fiber, has the main characteristics. Higher myosin actase activity than type I fibers lower capacity for ATP production via oxidative phosphorylation than, red, fibrous parser capillary network no intracellular myoglobin. Therefore, the main pathway for ATP production is anaerobic glycolysis, which is fast but not sustainable for as long as aerobic respiration, hence muscle fatigue occurs sooner.